Imagine if you already had J.K. Dobbins, Jordan Mason, Braylon Allen added to your team before they popped off and you did not have to rush to the waiver wire. Well, today I'm bringing in 10 plus targets that you must be stashing heading into week four for fantasy football. And these guys right here should already be stashed. I know there's a bunch of different league sizes, but these guys 100% need to be being stashed. We got Jonathan Brooks, who should be coming off of IR in the next few weeks. We talked about him as a great trade buy low candidate, but I have seen in some super shallow leagues, Jonathan Brooks out there on waiver wires. So make sure you go get some Jonathan Brooks. Michael Wilson Jr. was someone that we've been talking about in the last two weeks of fantasy football videos. And Michael Wilson had a great week three for fantasy football. I think anybody that was considering Michael Wilson, 14 fantasy points last week, 90% snap share, nine targets, eight receptions. Absolutely great. Make sure Michael Wilson is not out there on the waiver wire for you. Next guy is going to be Braylon Allen. I know Braylon Allen has been a waiver wire pickup. So you're going to say, Caleb, he should already be stashed. I agree. He should already be there. Honestly, has the ability to be in your lineup each and every week. Braylon Allen's a guy that shouldn't be out there on waivers. Demarcus Robinson is another guy that shouldn't be out there on waivers. So make sure if Demarcus Robinson is available in your league, go get him. I know Tutu Atwell outsnapped him and outperformed him last week, but go get some Demarcus Robinson. And then ending up the guys that should already be stashed, Bucky Irving. Of course, he's injured this week, so Rashad White's going to get the full workload. But going forward, Bucky Irving will be eating into Rashad White's workload just a little bit more. Now, moving on to the players that I believe you should be stashing heading into week four fantasy football. The first guy is going to be Roshan Johnson for the Chicago Bears. And last week, we saw some flashes from younger guys on the team. Cole Komet flashed. Romo Dunze flashed. But last week, Roshan Johnson also flashed with 10 fantasy points, 37% snap share, eight total attempts for 30 yards, did have five targets for receptions. Now, Roshan Johnson's only rostered in 40% of leagues. And I think the major thing with Roshan Johnson is a lot of people are worried, hey, where's DeAndre Swift going? going to play into this. And I think Roshan Johnson is going to continue to get more of the workload because DeAndre Swift has been super inefficient this season in the overall offense. If we take a look at the overall snap share, the thing we're going to notice about this Bears Colts game is that Roshan Johnson had 33 snaps to DeAndre Swift's 48. 13 carries though to eight carries for Roshan Johnson. So when Roshan Johnson was in, they were absolutely getting Roshan Johnson the ball. So Roshan Johnson's my first stash. I think he needs to be stashed everywhere. My second stash is going to be Xavier Leggett for the Carolina Panthers. And we had Xavier to get he on here after his week one performance going into week two because we said hey he had a 59 percent snap share seven targets four receptions 35 yards it looked good so if you picked him up after week one and hoping for big things had zero points in week two so you're, you might have dropped him but coming into week three did have a 59 percent snap share three three targets for two receptions 42 yards so it wasn't absolutely great but the thing that was great was this carolina panthers offense and so seeing andy don't come in absolutely ignite get guys like deontay johnson chuba hubbard involved creating some really great Great fantasy football scoring options is absolutely great to see. And Xavier Leggett, let's not forget, was drafted with first round draft capital. So as much as we like guys like Lad McConkey or Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett was drafted ahead of those guys. Now, whether we think the Carolina Panthers GM front office is any good, that's all besides the question. But Xavier Leggett has shown some flashes. And so I just wanted to bring him to you as a stash because I think definitely with all these injuries that are currently happening, having guys with high level upside on the end of your bench like an Xavier Leggett could definitely help if Roshan Johnson is not available. The next running back had that I would have would be Emmanuel Wilson for the Green Bay Packers. And Emmanuel Wilson has kind of slid into the, the RB2 role in the Marshawn Lloyd absence with 16 fantasy points last week versus Tennessee. He only had a 41% snapshot, but had 12 attempts for 50 yards, two receptions for one total touchdown. And he's only rostered in 28% of leagues. I know a lot of people are just kind of expect that when Marshawn Lloyd ends up coming back, it's going to kill Emmanuel Wilson's overall value. But let's not forget that this offense last week with Malik Willis, he still put up 16 fantasy points. And I have a lot of Josh Jacobs. So if you do have Josh Jacobs, I do think you need to handcuff him with Emmanuel Wilson, just because Emmanuel Wilson does have elite level upside. If something were to happen to Josh Jacobs and we got Jordan Love coming back over the next week to two weeks, I don't know if he's playing on Sunday. If he does play on Sunday, that's only going to boost this overall offense. Emmanuel Wilson is a guy that you absolutely need to be stashing at the end of your bench. Now, moving to two wide receivers that you need to be stashing. First one is going to be Luke McCaffrey for the Washington commanders and we talked about Luke McCaffrey in a previous video talking through mustaches and a lot of you guys liked talking through CMC's younger brother LMC and LMC honestly last week only had seven fancy points three targets for three receptions 44 yards but the thing that I want to talk about is even though that was his highest scoring performance yet we're seeing that this team is starting to really start to develop and Jane Daniels is looking good Brian Robinson's looking good we saw Terry finally start to get involved they're going to need some more pass catchers in this overall offense and so not that I'm projecting that all of a sudden the commanders are going to be a top five
five, top six overall offense. But I think if Jane Daniels can be just a proficient level NFL passer, which up to this point, it's been a lot of screens, been a lot of bubbles. We finally started to see that downfield game start to erupt for Jane Daniels. I think Luke McCaffrey is an absolutely great stash that you need to be having on your fantasy football rosters going forward. Definitely stash some LMC in your fantasy football rosters. The next guy that you should be stashing wide receiver wise is going to be Ricky Pearsall for the 49ers. And Ricky, of course, had to deal with that whole shooting incident earlier this offseason. He was seen running routes at practice this week. Let's not forget, Ricky was also in the same breath as Xavier Leggett drafted in the first round. And we've had a lot of injuries to this 49ers team. Not only Christian McCaffrey, but we've seen Debo go down. Granted, Jawan Jennings, absolute mammoth. Probably should have told you to stop some Jawan Jennings the past few weeks. I'm going to get in on the Ricky Persall getting there at some point. Now, when does he really start to fully run routes? When are they going to put him back in after that scary incident? I don't know, but Ricky Pearsall, 6'3", 192 out of the University of Florida. We did like his profile enough in the pre-draft process that I think we need to be giving some consideration to Ricky Pearsall because I just talked about how I liked Luke McCaffrey as a third round pick player before this. Ricky Pearsall was a first round drafted wide receiver. Absolutely have to love a little bit of Ricky going forward. The next guy we're going to be talking about is Blake Corman. You're probably going to say to me, well, Caleb, this dude 100% should already be stashed. And I would agree with you that he should already be stashed, but on sleeper leagues, he's only rostered in 36% of leagues. And I think the major reason that Blake Quorum is not stashed more is because of all these injuries that you need some production on your bench. And Blake Quorum last week only had zero fantasy points, had two fantasy points in week two and had zero in week one. So you're going to say to me, Caleb, why the heck? He's had zero usage on offense. And I hear you. He played seven snaps on special teams um, Sunday's game against the San Francisco 49ers. And really, Kyron Williams is just absolutely demolishing this snap share. So the idea that maybe with them drafting Blake Quorum in the third round, this would give him any opportunity, I guess was maybe a little bit faulty of a thought process. But the thing that I do want to hit on with Blake Quorum is he was a very good athlete. You see the jerseys behind me. He absolutely tormented my Ohio State Buckeyes for his whole college career. And I thought landing on a Rams team where Kyron Williams was a sixth round drafted running back, Blake Quorum was a third round drafted running back. I just thought Blake Quorum would be able to eat more into the snap share. It hasn't happened yet. But like we said, we saw Roshan Johnson start to get some work. We are continuing to see some of these backups becoming more and more prevalent as the weeks go on. And so I don't want to see you caught missing out and not holding the bag on Blake Quorum because Blake Quorum, if for any reason anything were to ever happen to Kyron Williams, Blake Quorum instantly gets boosted into the top 15 running backs in that given week. So give me some Blake Quorum as a late round stash. Like I said, you might be in a league where Blake Quorum's already taken and that's allowed because Blake Quorum is a good dude and you probably do need to be stashing some Blake Quorum. Moving on to a few final stashes. The next guy we're going to be talking about is Pop Douglas and this team for the Patriots has been absolutely bad. I mean, Jacoby Brissett looked terrible in that Thursday night game versus the Jets. But in the Jets game, he did have 14 fantasy points, 83% snap share, nine targets for seven receptions, 69 yards. Because Demario Douglas, Pop Douglas, is just a very good athlete. And that Pop Douglas is just a very good route runner, super fast, elusive slot guy. And those are the type of guys that, especially in struggling offenses, tend to produce some fantasy points. Now, over the next few weeks, there's a good chance that Drake May ends up taking over for Jacoby Brissett. Listen, this offensive line sucks. So I understand them continuing to hold out Drake May, but Demario Douglas is someone that, especially in a deeper level format, definitely worthy of a stash. He's only 15% rostered over on Sleeper Leagues. Go check out some Demario Douglas. I didn't want to end this video without giving you two stashes for tight ends. And number one is going to be Zach Ertz for the Commanders. He is 37% rostered. Honestly, this tight end landscape sucks. And we've talked about the top level guys, the Sam Laportas, the Travis Kelseys, the Mark Andrews, just absolutely eating you alive and you not being able to find any sort of reliable production at the tight end position. Might I interest you in Zach Ertz? Eight fantasy points in week three, 10 fantasy points in week two. And in all of that, he had a snap share of around 64 to 71%, had about four to five targets in each of those games. And as we're continuing to see this offense evolve, I think Terry McLaurin, Brian Robinson, both very good players, going to get a majority of the looks. But guys like Zach Ertz and LMC are going to have to step up in this offense for them to continue to take those next steps. So Zach Ertz, like I said, he remains a very undervalued tight end in the fantasy football landscape, definitely check out some Zach Ertz. And if you're maybe playing in a little bit deeper of a league, you're playing in, you know, a 12, 14, 16 team league with very deep benches. The next guy that I would suggest to you is going to be Eric All for my Cincinnati Bengals. And Eric All 
coming out of the University of Iowa, he was really dealing with an injury that forced him to fall to that fourth round. If you were being honest with yourself, he was probably like a second round level talent. And so for him to fall to the Bengals, we saw Mike Gusecki the last few weeks really start to perform. But Eric Alt, he hauled in all four of his targets, four for four for 22 yards in Monday night's game versus the Washington Commanders. Now, seven fantasy points the week before that in week two. So I just think Eric All is really starting to get going. We've seen some struggle from the Bengals wide receiver core. I like some Eric Hall. If you watch some highlights from his time at Iowa before he got injured, it was absolutely incredible. You'd never want to bet against an Iowa tight end. I mean, granted, we've seen Sam Laporte last year. Previous years, we've seen TJ Hawkson, Noah Fant, George Kittle, to just name a few of these guys. Almost all the best tight ends in the league are from Iowa. And so I think Eric Hall has unlimited potential to get there. And so I definitely think Eric Hall is worth a stash. So if you like fantasy football, if you like some stashes, hit that like and subscribe button. Here are two more videos if you haven't checked out already. Answering every comment down below with your start sit questions. If you have any drop sit waiver wire questions, I am here to help you win your week, win your season. Appreciate you being here. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.